What's up guys, it's Dalmater here, and today we're going to be reacting to Warhammer 40k lore for newcomers. Who are the Space Marines? So this is from 40k Theories. I have reacted to two of his videos before. One of them was about the Chaos Space Marines, and one of them was about the Imperial Dreadnoughts. And this was the third one I was asked to react to. I think this is the last 40k Theories video I've been asked to react to. So if there's any more, just you know, comment them down below. Uh, any more that you guys want me to check out. Uh, but yeah, this is obviously going to be about the Space Marines. I'm guessing it's going to go down and break into the different factions and stuff. Uh, talk about their origins. I know a little bit about that. Obviously, the God Emperor created them uh, with some kind of genetic engineering. Uh, there's, you know, ten, well, I guess technically nine good factions, nine bad ones, two guys that are missing slash didn't exist. Still kind of iffy on that. Uh, it seems like, from my understanding, Games Workshop either forgot about them or... It's like a joke, running joke in the community that they don't exist as like that is heresy or something. Um, depending on who is commented, I've got like very different answers. So uh, maybe if there's a good video on the two missing Primark, somebody could link that down below. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into this. So again, 40k theories, link to the original video down below and let's go. Okay, got the volume on, we're good. Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of 40k Lore for Newcomers. For this episode, we will be taking a brief look at the Adeptus Astartes, or as they are more commonly known, the Space Marines. As always, this is a brief overview and certain events and such will have their own in-depth videos dedicated to them within the future. So without further ado, let's begin. While the enemies of the Emperor still draw breath, there can be no peace. The Adeptus Astartes are genetically augmented transhuman super soldiers originally designed by the Emperor of Mankind himself. They are larger, stronger, and longer lived than regular humans, with heightened reflexes, a superior healing ability, and cognitive enhancement. They are one of the Imperium's most elite fighting forces, akin to militant monastic orders, and they are more- That guy's cool looking, who's that? Tim that in the back. Commonly known to the people of the Imperium as the Emperor's Angels of Death. They are separated into various chapters, each with their own heraldry and unique cultural aspects. Some are brutal and savage berserkers from vicious death worlds while others are stoic and disciplined, being the epitome of humanity's nature. Astartes are equipped with some of the finest weaponry and armor available to any of the Imperium's militant forces, and are a potent force upon the battlefield. Whenever they make their presence known, they bring hope to the loyal servants of the Emperor, and fear into the enemies of man. True justice is quite simply the will of the Emperor. The creation of the original Astartes began at the end of the Terran Unification Wars, prior to the advent of the Great Crusade. They are, in essence, the successors to the Emperor's original Thunder Warrior project, who were even larger and stronger than an Astartes, yet with much shorter lifespans. The genetic material- Oh okay, I'd never even heard of them before. I've never heard a single mention of the fact that he had these Thunder Warriors prior to them. That's interesting. Used in the creation of the Astarte- That guy has to be- he went bad, right? That, that, I recognize him, I'm pretty sure he's one of the Primarchs that went bad. Who saw that coming with all his little fucking Cthune eyeballs all over him? These ...was harvested from samples taken from the infant forms of the Primarchs the genetic sons of the Emperor himself. The Primarchs themselves would be spirited away from the Emperor's gene labs before they reached maturity by the Chaos Gods and scattered throughout the galaxy. These warriors- 
Okay, so was it the gods or was it his wife or whatever? Because I heard in the one video I was watching, somebody said that it was, uh, I can't remember her name, Eritrea or something like that? Eritrea? Um, but that she was, like, the mother of them or something and that she had some involvement in it. Was that, like, retconned or was that guy just not know what he's talking about? Augmented with Primarch DNA, the first true Astartes would be organized into 20 separate legions, which could be up to a hundred times larger than a modern-day Space Marine chapter. These legions would travel from Terra across the galaxy to conquer and reclaim worlds in the name of the Emperor and the Imperium. Over the course of the Great Crusade, each Space Marine legion would eventually be reunited with its respective Primarch who would take command of the Legion. Two of the Primarchs and their respective Legions would have their names and records erased from the annals of Imperial history for some unknown transgression. Okay. Who these Primarchs were and what crimes they may have committed is unlikely to ever come to light. Within the early years of M31, a civil war known as the Horus Heresy would erupt where fully half of the remaining Space Marine Legions would rebel against the Emperor and side with the treacherous War Master of the Imperium, Horus Lupercal. This civil war would devastate the nascent Imperium and result in several Primarchs being slain over the course of the conflict, and it would end with the Emperor being mortally wounded and interred into the life support systems of the Golden Throne. It was following the events of the Horus Heresy that the Primarch Rebute Gilliman would pen a text known as the Codex Astartes, which would restructure the Space Marine Legions into smaller chapters. Some chapters would retain their original Legion name and heraldry, while the others would take all new names and heraldry and would become known as successor chapters. About six pixels Gilliman's on reason for splitting the Legions was to ensure that no one man could have the power that Horus himself had, and in theory, prevent such a civil war from ever happening again. Fenris breeds heroes like a bar breeds drunks, loud, proud, and spoiling for a fight. The creation of a space marine is a long and time-consuming process, which takes approximately a decade to fully complete. Astartes have been known to recruit potential aspirants from a number of different sources, including from young gang members from the depths of Hive Worlds or from the vicious tribes of Feral Death Worlds. Aspirants are taken at a relatively young age, typically between 10 to 12 Terran standard years of age. Each Space Marine chapter will have their own unique recruitment process, and those aspirants who are chosen will be forced to undergo certain trials to prove their worthiness to be made into an Astartes. The aspirants of the Raven Guard, for example, will be tasked with capturing and killing a Kiavaran Raven with their bare hands to prove their skill, while aspirants of the Blood Angels must cross a vast and dangerous desert to reach an area known as the Place of Challenge to prove their worth. If these aspirants prove themselves worthy, then over the course of the next six to ten years, they are implanted with each of the organs unique to Astartes' physiology. Once the implantation process has begun, these aspirants become known to the chapter as neophytes and their training begins. As their training progresses, these neophytes will typically spend time within the scout company under the tutelage of a veteran sergeant although this varies with some chapters. It is here in a scout company that the neophytes will be trained in the art of war and how to utilize the weaponry and equipment of the chapter. Upon the battlefield, they will be used to perform reconnaissance and utilize guerrilla tactics against the enemy. As more and more of the genetic augmentations are implanted into the neophytes, they will eventually become known as initiates to the rest of the chapter. When the initiates are deemed ready, which is roughly between 16 to 18 years of age, they will receive their final implant, 
the Black Carapace and become a fully fledged battle brother of the chapter. Once they become a battle brother, Astartes will move from the scout company. What is the Black Carapace? The Carapace is like a, a bug skin, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. Carapace. I'm pretty sure it's like the skin of a bug. Yeah, a hard upper shell of a turtle, crustacean, or arachnid. Uh, something regarded as protective or defensive covering. Okay, so they get like a... Like a second layer of skin then? Into one of the other nine companies within the chapter, with the exception of the first company, which is purely for the most skilled and honoured veteran warriors of the chapter. Once assigned to a company, these battle brothers will then be attached to the chapter's devastator squads and will be tasked with calling targets to the veteran battle brothers of the squad, who will be the ones utilising the heavy weaponry typical of a devastator squad. After gaining some more experience, some of the younger members of the devastators may find themselves transferred into one of the chapter's many assault squads, where they learn the art of melee and meet the enemy head on in close combat. Once a battle brother has mastered the weaponry and tactics of the scout, devastator and assault squads, then they can become part of a tactical squad. These tactical squads form the backbone of the chapter's military strength, and thanks to their training are considered to be jacks of all trades, able to perform well in any given situation upon the field of battle. A number of aspirants, however, will be selected and trained to perform specialist tasks within the chapter. Some will be sent to Mars to undergo the training to become a tech marine, where they will learn the tenets of the machine cult of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and gain knowledge on how to repair the chapter's vehicles and equipment. That looks cool. Others will be sent to the Apothecarium, where they will be trained to become apothecaries, medics and healers who are responsible for future gene seed implantation and recovery. And others still will be selected to become chaplains, who maintain the chapter's cultural beliefs and inspire their brothers to great acts of valour in the name of their Emperor and Primarch. If they are found to have psychic potential, then these aspirants may find themselves selected to join the ranks of the Librarius, becoming trained as a Librarian, warrior psychers of immense skill, discipline and knowledge. If a hero of the chapter suffers wounds that are too grievous to be treated by the chapter's apothecaries, they may find themselves entombed within the sarcophagus of a dreadnought, a robotic construct that is, effectively, a walking tank. Within a dreadnought, an Astartes can live on and continue to serve the chapter for millennia to come. One of the most notable in this regard is Bjorn the Fell Handed of the Space Wolves chapter, who fought alongside his Primarch during the events of the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy. Unlike the rest of the Imperium who either worship the Emperor as a god or follow the tenets of the Cult Mechanicus, the majority of Space Marine chapters hold true to their ancient customs and beliefs. The tenets of each chapter cult will vary from chapter to chapter, and some can be extremely barbaric and savage. Regardless of their own cultural beliefs, all Space Marine chapters venerate the Emperor as the master of mankind, and will fight to the death to defend his Imperium and his subjects. Do not fail your brothers. Though their bodies die, their spirit must return to the chapter. That is your charge. As mentioned earlier, the basis of an Astartes genetic augmentation comes from the genetic material or gene seed derived from their respective Primarch. As a result of this, chapters that are derived from the DNA of different Primarchs will display different traits from one another, which can be as minor as behavioural quirks or as major as fully fledged genetic markers. Following the events of the Horus Heresy, only the gene seed of the nine loyalist Primarchs is officially used 
in the process of creating successor chapters. But there have been rumours and speculation that some chapters have utilised a gene seed of some of the traitor Primarchs. When an aspirant begins to pro- So, are they worried about them becoming corrupted too then by using those genes, or is it just kind of like, like is it like a pseudo-religious thing, or is there like an actual, like, functional reason behind that? And also, I didn't know they were making new chapters. How do the new chapters work? Do they not have Primarchs? ...process of being transformed into an Astartes. A total of 19 separate organs are implanted into them if they are to become a standard Astartes, with an additional three implants in the case of Primaris Marines, which shall be covered later on. While some of these organs are fully functional immediately after implantation, some will only become viable after certain other organs are implanted, or through a series of chemical treatments and hypnotherapy. The first of these organs to be implanted is the secondary heart, which not only functions as a backup for the Astartes' own natural heart, but this organ can also help an Astartes survive in low oxygen environments and maintain blood flow. The second is the Osmodula, which helps reinforce an Astartes skeleton with ceramic materials that is drawn from the Astartes' own diet. In addition, this organ causes the bones to grow longer and thicker, accounting for the Astartes' increased size, as well as altering the ribcage into a series of interlocking plates to better protect the organs within. The third is the Biscopia, which stimulates the growth of extra muscle mass, enhancing an Astartes' physical strength. Fourth is the Hemastamin, which increases the amount of hemoglobin within the Astartes' bloodstream, making it more efficient at transporting oxygen throughout the body. The fifth is the Laramin's organ, which is implanted into the chest and connected to the circulatory system. It secretes special Laramin cells, which attach to the leukocytes within the blood if the Astartes is injured. These cells will then quickly seal off almost any wound that the Astartes has suffered, giving an Astartes their remarkable resilience. Sixth is the Catalepsia node, which is implanted within an Astartes brain. This organ controls the body's circadian rhythm, and allows the Astartes to switch off certain portions of their brain in response to sleep. Man, I feel like they should have done the healing factor last. Because could you imagine how much of a fucking pain in the ass it would be to do surgery on these guys after you fucking and start implanting shit after you've already increased their healing factor? You, like, cut into them. You're like, oh, shit, I forgot it in the other room. You come back, his fucking head's already healed. <laughs> Deprivation, allowing an Astartes to remain awake for up to two weeks straight at a time. The seventh organ is the Preomnor. This organ acts as a secondary stomach, which neutralizes poisonous materials before they enter the stomach, rendering an Astartes immune to ingesting most types of toxins. Eighth is the Omophagia, which is implanted within the spinal cord and connected to the stomach. This allows an Astartes to experience the memories of the dead by eating their flesh. Ninth is the multi okay. which allows an Astartes to breathe toxic gases, atmospheres with low oxygen density, and even water by shutting off their natural lungs in favor of this third lung. It's pretty badass, but the, for the fact that you just like eat people and have their memories, that's like some fucking... I don't even know. It's like some fucking voodoo shit. That's actually it's pretty cool, but it's weird. I never even thought of like that as one of their powers. I just thought they were like fucking super tanks. I had no idea they could fucking eat stuff and like have its memories. So if they eat like a Tyranid, could they get like the? Aren't they like a collective hive mind? Couldn't they get like the memories of the entire hive mind then? The tenth organ is the oculobe, which, when used in conjunction with the correct stimuli and therapy increases the growth of the retinal cells within the eye, giving Astartes the ability to see perfectly in low-light environments, as well as enhancing their eyesight to a level far superior than that of unaugmented humans. The eleventh is the Lyman's ear. 
This organ completely replaces an Astarte's natural ear, for one that not only enhances an Astarte's hearing, allowing them to filter and enhance specific sounds, but also renders an Astarte's immune to motion sickness, and unable to be made dizzy. Twelfth is the Susan Membrane, which allows an Astartes to enter a state of suspended animation, either consciously or as an instinctive response to severe trauma, allowing them to survive for centuries even after suffering the most grievous of wounds. The thirteenth organ is the melanchromic organ. This controls the amount of melanin within the skin of an Astartes, affording them protection from not only intense sunlight by darkening the skin when needed, but also many types of radiation, even that which would kill regular humans outright. Fourteenth is the Ul- <coughs> That would be super broken, because if you're on a planet with like no sunlight, or little sunlight, you can just lower the melanin to be like white as fuck, and then you get like extra vitamin D, and then you just crank it up if you go to another planet. And then you're immune to fucking, you know, like sunburns and shit. Ulictic kidney, which in conjunction with the secondary heart, filters the bloodstream of an Astartes at rapid pace to purge their system of toxins, giving them protection from most types of poisons and venoms. If an Astartes is afflicted with a lethal dose of toxins, the ulytic kidney can perform an emergency detoxification of an Astartes bloodstream, but this will render them temporarily unconscious due to the rapid pace at which blood is pumped through the body. Fifteenth is the Neuroglottis, which heightens an Astartes' sense of taste to an extreme degree, allowing them to identify numerous chemical components by taste alone, and even track down an enemy by taste in a similar manner to a Jacobson's organ found within snakes. The sixteenth organ is the Mucronoid, which coats the skin of an Astartes with a waxy secretion to protect them from extreme temperature and even provides limited protection from exposure to the vacuum of space. Seventeenth are the Betcher's glands, which allows an Astartes to spit a potent and highly acidic venom. The Wait, penultimate what? organs to be implanted- What? <laughs> uh, fucking they can spit venom? What? That's an, I was not expecting that. I've, I'm surprised I've never seen that in like any of the like animations or anything I've watched. Like. Maybe with the, uh, oh, excuse me. Maybe I'd seen like a Chaos Space Marine do it, but I would just assume that was from them being a Chaos Space Marine. I didn't realize there's regular Space Marines and like fucking spit like acidic venom at people. Did other progenoid glands. These glands are arguably the most important of all the gene seed implants, for they will absorb genetic material from the other implants over the course of a decade until they become gene seed. These organs will then serve as a repository storing the data of all the other organs within an Astartes, so if an Astartes is slain in battle, the gene seed can be recovered and returned to the chapter, where new organs can be grown and implanted into new aspirants, keeping the chapter alive. The final organ is the black carapace, which is implanted under the skin of an Astartes. This carapace allows an Astartes to perfectly interface with its power armor at a neurological level, allowing it to become, effectively, a part of their bodies. Okay. However, over the So I see, I see why it's called the carapace. It's not actually like the, the thing itself is a carapace, it's that it basically allows you to use the armor as a carapace. Course ...of the last 10,000 years, the gene seed stock of the various Space Marine chapters has begun to slowly degenerate. Flaws within the gene seed are becoming more and more commonplace. Some of these flaws are relatively minor, such as the Death Spectres chapter suffering a defective melanchromic organ, resulting in the warriors of the chapter suffering from albinism. Others are much more drastic, such as the Black Dragons chapter suffering from a hyperactive osmodular organ resulting in the warriors of the chapter developing bony horns and crests, as well as blade-like protrusions from their arms. 
to monitor sick. the stability and purity of the gene seed, each chapter is ordered to send roughly 5% of their gene seed stock at regular intervals as a tithe to the Adeptus Mechanicus. Once the tithes have been received, the Adeptus Mechanicus will conduct purity checks upon it to determine if the mutations within the gene seed break the bounds of tolerance of genetic purity. If a chapter's gene seed is deemed too flawed or too impure, then that chapter will be destroyed along with any and all of their gene seed stock. The incantation of activation. Speak I feel like when that happens, it's going to cause some like minor civil war skirmishes type shit. Um, yeah, that's just so with with the the chapters. Are they different than? <clears throat> So, like, the chapters are different than the... I don't even know what you'd call them. I thought the chapters were the ones that had the prime marks. What are these, like, other ones that he's mentioning that are also chapters? Are there some chapters without prime marks, then? I'm so confused. I think I, I, I'm more questions than, than answers out of this video. Although there is, like, a lot of interesting stuff, but... Speak forth the litany of retribution and deliver unto our enemy the wrath of the Omnissiah. In addition to a standard Astartes... There are also what are known as Primaris Space Marines. These particular Astartes have their origins set during the events of the Horus Heresy, with the Raptor Project conducted by the Primarch Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard Legion, which failed thanks to the actions of Alpha Legion double agents. But following the events of the Horus Heresy, the Primarch Rebute Gilliman instructed the Archmagus Dominus of the newly restructured Adeptus Mechanicus, Belisarius Call, to begin the creation of a new breed of Astartes that would aid the Imperium in its darkest hour. Primaris Marines are physically larger and stronger than a typical Astartes, and in addition boast a gene seed that is far more stable, with only a 0.001% chance of genetic deviation. This stability has also been able to seemingly eliminate some of the most incurable and infamous of genetic flaws, such as the Black Rage within the gene seed of the Blood Angels. As well as having enhanced strength, size and gene seed stability, Primaris Marines also feature three additional genetic implants over standard Astartes. These are the Sinew Coils, which reinforce the sinews within the Astartes' body with durametallic cabling that also enhances the host's strength and acts as another form of internal protection. The Magnificat, which enhances the growth rate of a Primaris Marine's body, as well as the efficiency of their internal organs. And finally, the Belisarian Furnace, which expels a series of stimulants in the events of extreme stress or physical trauma which also aids with the regeneration of any wounds that the Astartes has received. Many Space Marine chapters have been reinforced with this new and improved breed of Astartes, and even entire chapters have been founded that are comprised entirely of Primaris Marines, giving the Imperium some much needed reinforcement. However, it should also be noted that while some chapters welcome these new Astartes with open arms, some chapters have outright refused Primaris reinforcement for various reasons. And that concludes this edition of 40k Lore for Newcomers. If you like this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. Until next time, this has been Remlays from 40k Theories, and we'll see you soon. Okay, so very, very good video, but I, I have one question that I kind of asked this before. So, I thought the chapters were the ones that have the prime marks, or is that the factions? I th wait, no, because the factions is like just the, the Imperial Space Marines, so... How... Do, like, how are they founding new chapters? Are those new chapters just not have prime marks? I'm, I'm kind of confused about that part. Maybe somebody let me know down below, but anyway... Other than that, that was a great video. I'm just kind of confused on that one bit. But uh, let me know what you think. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.